promotional fee has been paid to ABC Sports by United Airlines. Come fly the airline that's uniting the world. Come fly the friendly skies. This is ABC. Eyewitness News is next, and coming up, is the number one suspect in the bombing of the World Trade Center a trained terrorist? Tonight, the family of Mohammed Salami comes to his defense in Jordan. You'll hear his mother's plea next. Meantime, explosives experts are finally getting into the giant bomb crater under the World Trade Center. We'll have a live report. Also coming up tonight, an incredible story out of Brooklyn. Two men are killed in a violent shootout, and their bullets strike down an innocent victim two blocks away. We'll hear from the devastated family. And negotiations in the cult standoff in Waco, Texas, take a turn for the worst. We'll have a live report. Those stories, plus, is the Navy home port in Staten Island on the short list to be shut down. It's all coming up next on Eyewitness News. Hi. You know what's so great about friendlies? First of all, I get to eat free. Second of all, they have lots of good stuff to choose from, like crispy chicken, juicy cheeseburgers, or great hot dogs. And guess what? You even get a free ice cream treat. You don't get that anyplace else. Okay, so what's the catch? Well, you have to bring a grown-up along, but that's okay. <laughs> Kids eat free at Friendly's every day after four. find all this? If you said the Bahamas, you're not only right, you're close. The Bahamas, the country Columbus first set foot on. Non-stop from JFK and Newark. Call 1-800-7-BAHAMAS or your travel agent. Jeopardy has a challenge for everyone. This state borders Mississippi on both the west and the south. It's a spasm in this muscle that causes a hiccup. This is the root of all evil. In 1964 and 1967, this Cardinals pitcher was named World Series MVP. Puffer and Puckatash. What's your category? You'll find it when you take the Jeopardy Challenge. Play Jeopardy tomorrow night at 7 on Channel 7. Hollywood's hottest hunts will be along on the next lot. This is Channel 7 Eyewitness News with Harry Martin, Sarah Wallace, Mark Stevens with sports, and the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. Good evening, I'm Harry Martin. Tonight, investigators are still on the hunt for clues, clues that may lead them to additional suspects in the World Trade Center bombing. In the meantime, a picture of the prime suspect, Mohammed Salame, is coming into sharper focus. Members of his family in Jordan are speaking up in his defense, and they say that they have been plunged into a nightmare. <laughs> Salame's mother, Aisha Abu Bakr, still cannot believe what is happening that her eldest son was arrested after he allegedly tried to reclaim a deposit on a van used to carry explosives in the World Trade Center bombing. As she held pictures of her son, Abu Bakr denied that he was a terrorist. The family's small apartment in Jordan is decorated with a picture of the Dome of the Rock, a holy shrine of Islam. But Salame's brothers deny that their sibling is a Muslim fundamentalist. They do say that he is religious and that right before he left for the United States in 1987, Salame underwent a noticeable change. One brother said that he started to pray and read the Quran with his friends, he even grew a beard. But both the family and a Jordanian government official say that the suspect had no extremist beliefs. He was not politically motivated. Uh, he was a young, young man, you know, and he just didn't have any political uh, inclinations or any political activism. Meanwhile, Salame's mother told about a shy and peaceful boy who loved to play soccer and watch westerns. She recalled the dreams that he would go to business school in America. And now she says that she just prays that justice will allow her son to come home. Salame's mother said that she last heard from her son on January the 19th. He called the family to discuss marriage. His mother believes that he may have wanted to get married to obtain U.S. citizenship. Sarah? Well, Harry, tonight many Muslims around the U.S. are complaining that the arrest of Salame has turned them into innocent victims of a backlash. Arab American groups say they are receiving threatening and obscene phone calls. And police in Jersey City say the mosque where Salame worshipped was the target of vandals this weekend. 
The spokesman for the Al Salam Mosque on Kennedy Boulevard says a statement has been sent to several politicians, including the president, that condemns the bombing totally against our religion. We're not responsible for anybody who commit any kind of violence. The Al Salam Mosque was also the scene of a peaceful protest today by the Coalition for Jewish Concerns. Eric. Tonight, the painstaking process of sifting through the rubble of the World Trade Center continues as federal investigators go through the debris piece by piece. Celeste Ford joins us now live from the World Trade Center with details. Celeste. Harry, today the FBI met with the New York Police Department and the U.S. Attorney's Office. It was billed as a 90-minute strategy session, and afterward there was no further comment and still no clear indication of a motive in the bombing. Meantime, the Port Authority is moving toward its April 1st deadline for reopening the Twin Towers. With jackhammers and blowtorches, Port Authority workers haul away the tangled metal, heaps of rubble, and smashed cars. Although dried blood was sighted yesterday, Connecticut State Police dogs have not found the 37-year-old father of two still unaccounted for. The Port Authority explains the delay. Because of the fact that there is overhanging slab and there are um, other areas of unstable slab and debris that need to be stabilized first. The basement of the World Trade Center is so unstable, investigators are lowered into the debris in this bucket called the spider. It's suspended from scaffolding. One space was left untouched by the explosion, the all-steel holding cells in the Port Authority police station. Working with the FBI, they hope to reach ground zero by week's end. We have a piece of uh, material. We ask them, are you interested? If they are, they take a swipe maybe to, for chemical purposes, and then they say, fine, get rid of it. Or, yeah, we want that piece of equipment or that debris, put it into containers and, and, and store it. The FBI was quiet today following a flurry of breakthroughs. On Thursday, they arrested 25-year-old Mohammed Salome. On Friday, they went to his address and arrested this man. Ibrahim El Gabrani is the cousin of El Said Nasser, the man tried in the murder of Rabbi Meir Kahana. That night, the FBI also seized bomb-making chemicals from a storage space, which it says Salome rented. Go to the table right there, and then the escort will come and get you, okay? Back at the World Trade Center, there was a trickle of tenants seeking access to their offices today. Next month, the Port Authority will permit them to return in stages. Would you like to leave your offices at the World Trade Center behind? No way. Personally, I don't think that there is a reason for that. Mm -hmm. By the way, now it's the most secured place in the world. One more note regarding the missing man, Wilfredo Mercado of Brooklyn. His employer, the restaurant Windows on the World, is still paying him, and the Port Authority is considering the establishment of a fund for his wife and two children. And we're live in Lower Manhattan. I'm Celeste Ford, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. In Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, the sound of gunfire is unfortunately all too common. 23-year-old Rafael Santana knew the streets. He grew up there. He knew them so well, he never thought the violence would claim him. Last night, though, it did. Santana became an innocent victim of a gun battle nearly two blocks away. Jada Dapper has more. His friends and family called him Butch. The streets of Bed-Stuy called 22-year-old Rafael Santana unlucky. Last night, Santana was hit in the chest by a stray bullet during a gun battle that left two men dead in front of this pool hall on Tompkins Avenue. Santana's sister and, uh, said her brother was hanging out with friends down the street when it all happened. And next thing you know, he heard the shots. It was three blocks away. Then everything happened in a matter of seconds. You know, everybody was running. Uh, the guys who were shooting at each other came closer. Everybody was ducking. He ducked. The bullet hit him in the arm, went to his heart. He fell down on the floor. Friends drove him to Woodhull Hospital, but doctors couldn't save him. Today, his mother remembered warning him about the dangerous streets outside the family's home. I told him, Butchie, be careful when you go out there, you know, because they be shooting now. Don't worry about it, man. What's truly amazing is that Santana and his friends were standing at this bodega, which is at least two blocks away from where the gunman was firing his semi-automatic handgun. As one cop said, you could fire at something two blocks away a million times and never hit it. But last night, nobody was aiming for Butch Santana. Police say they have few leads. Three men were seen fleeing the area in a white car, but nobody on the street is talking. And Butch Santana's family is left mourning the death of a boy who caught a bullet with somebody else's name on it. In Bedford-Stuyvesant, J.D. Depper, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. 
Another case of an innocent victim here is a New York City corrections officer is recovering from gunshot wounds tonight. Police say that he was the victim of a robbery attempt in Brooklyn. 23-year-old William Danzi was walking to his car in the Crown Heights section last evening when he was shot in the stomach during an alleged robbery by three men. Police say that Danzi fired five shots from his off-duty revolver, but it's not known whether he wounded his assailants. They got away. The Staten Island Navy home port may be on the list of proposed military base closings by the Clinton administration. Pentagon sources are saying the home port in the Stapleton section of Staten Island could be one of about 30 bases targeted because of defense cuts. Defense Secretary Les Aspen won't comment on specific installations, but will announce next week what he calls, quote, the mother of all base closings list. Staten Island's borough president says he'll fight for the home port every step of the way. We're very concerned. Uh, the home port's finished. We still have about 900 and some odd houses that are being built. Um, a lot of construction money. There's still two more ships to come in. A lot of personnel. It means a lot of money to our city, a lot of jobs. Two years ago, the Staten Island base narrowly survived the latest round of Defense Department closures. Much more ahead on Eyewitness News tonight with the deadly standoff in Waco, Texas into its eighth day. FBI agents say that they have reached a stalemate now. We will have a live report. And another violent story out of Texas tonight. A teenage boy apparently upset about his homework opens fire from his bedroom window. Even at 55 miles per hour, the sound inside the Lexus LS400 is so pure we're able to record and air this performance on classical radio stations across the country. Listen for it. It's the latest release on the Lexus label. I'm on the road day in and day out. It's, hey, taxi, stop, and, uh, cabbie, quick, stop here. <laughs> I know the value of good brakes. My livelihood depends on it. And when I'm off duty, our lives depend on good brakes. That's why I depend on Meineke. At Meineke, we do brakes, and we do them right. We analyze the whole system, pinpoint the problem, and fix it, period. No matter why you're on the road, you can depend on brakes from Meineke. I do. Bills, bills, and more bills. More than you can handle? If you're a homeowner, call Statewide Capital at 1-800-DIAL-CASH and consolidate them into one low-cost home equity loan. Even if you've been turned down at the bank, you can lower your monthly payments. Your interest may be tax deductible. Then get just one monthly bill. Make one low payment. For a better tomorrow, dial cash today. Call Statewide Capital now at 1-800-DIAL-CASH. Peg owns a business on Long Island and cares about the environment. That's why she calls Lilco about their many energy-wise conservation programs. One of their programs helped her install energy-saving lighting, and they gave her a cash rebate. Lilco offers a whole family of energy-wise programs, so give us a call if you'd like to focus on energy conservation. Stay tuned. Here's a preview of what's coming up tonight, right here on Channel 7. Tonight, the standoff in Waco, Texas is into its second week as armed cult leader David Koresh refuses to give up. Last night, there was a glimmer of hope that things may have been improving, but now officials say that Koresh is getting irritable. Carolyn Mungo has the very latest from Waco, Texas. It was only music, but it held significance. It was the first sound that's come from the cult compound since the deadly sound of gunfire eight days ago. I believe it was their attempt to, in fact, engage in such practice against us. Uh, but let me assure you that, that we have uh, what I believe is the most professional group of people in the world who are trained to handle these matters, and those things have absolutely no effect on us. Today, federal agents again used a press briefing to appeal to David Koresh. The armed cult leader reportedly turned down a settlement offer late last night. The reason we're throwing it out is that we want Mr. Koresh to know how serious we are about these offers. This is not something we're throwing out there to just induce a discussion between us and Mr. Korsh. We want to get this matter settled. And by me coming in, I'm not part of the discussion process. 
by me coming in and repeating that we take these issues very seriously, we hope that he will also take these matters seriously. Agents say Koresh is starting to get frustrated about not being able to get out his side of the story. But the community in Waco today is hearing plenty. Our trust is to be in Jesus Christ alone. We're not to put our trust in self-proclaimed messiahs or in self-proclaimed prophets like David Koresh. That was uh, Carolyn Mungo's report from uh, Waco, Texas, and we will have more, of course, on this uh, developing story tonight on Eyewitness News at 11 o'clock. Sarah? And another violent and tragic story today out of Texas involving a child sniper. Police say a 14-year-old boy, apparently enraged that his parents disciplined him for a bad grade, opened fire from a house in a Fort Worth suburb. One police officer was killed and three people seriously wounded. Almost an hour after the shooting began, officers fired several shots into the house. One of the bullets apparently killed the boy. Police say the boy, whose father is a police officer, was found lying amid an arsenal of loaded rifles. Tragic story. Well, Mark Stevens is coming up next with today's sports action. And if you are anxious for baseball season to start, how about some Yankees and Mets action in day two of spring training? And in college hoop action, Rutgers takes on St. Joe's in the Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament. Mark has all those highlights coming up. Credit cards. It seems we're being deluged by them. Cards offering rebates or cash back or other assorted gimmicks. And all those cards are hoping you won't notice they're charging incredibly high interest. Fortunately, there's Consumer's Edge, the one card that gives you what you really want, an amazingly low rate with absolutely no annual fee. And that's why you should reach for the phone and call 1-800-235-EDGE to get an application for a Consumer's Edge MasterCard or Visa. That's right. Consumer's Edge offers just about the lowest rate anywhere to all our customers. And even though finance charges are calculated from day to purchase, Consumer's Edge can still cost you a lot less. So call 1-800-235-EDGE now, because it's time you got out from under all those gimmicky high-rate cards and got yourself a Consumer's Edge MasterCard or Visa instead, only from the Bank of New York. The all-new 1993 Lincoln Mark 8. Four cams, 32 valves, 280 horses. Mark 8, together with Lincoln Town Car and Continental, make Lincoln the only domestic car line to offer dual airbags and four-wheel ABS brakes standard on every 93 model. And when you consider how easy it is to lease a Lincoln right now, it all adds up to this. You simply have to have it. Mark 8, Town Car, Continental, at your Lincoln Mercury dealer. James and Benny were hiking when James had a near-fatal fall. I tried to find a pulse. What happened next is what landed them both in jail. I just did what I thought I had to do and to keep him alive. Even Benny's wife was dragged into their scam. They come over there and start to take his pants down. Well, I was like, oh my God, this ain't my husband. Now she's left with the kids while they're sailmates. Would you go to prison for your best friend on the next Oprah? Monday at 4, followed by Eyewitness News here on Channel 7. She provides a valuable service for an exclusive clientele. The fees are thousands. Faye Dunaway is the Beverly Hills Madam, the late movie after Eyewitness News, here on Channel 7. Yankees going for bragging rights for a second day in a row. And did they ever? 19 hits they got against the Mets, at least for the weekend. Yankee fans are entitled to give Met fans the business, because their guys earn the bragging rights by sweeping the exhibition twosome. The Yankees beat the Mets in Fort Lauderdale yesterday, and the Yankees beat the Mets in Port St. Lucie today. Doc Gooden may have been knocked around a bit yesterday, but it did knock the smile off his face. Melito Perez, first start of the spring, facing Howard Johnson in the second. Forget about it. And is that ever a sight for sore Met eyes? Remember, Hojo only hit seven homers all last year. Yanks went ahead on Brett Saberhagen in the third. Paul O'Neill shows why the Yanks traded for him. Double scores Don Sparks, whoever he is. O'Neill scored the go-ahead. It was 2-1. Bombers added three in the fourth when Randy Velarde drove in two of them with that line single. 5-2 Bombers. Bottom of the inning, though. 
The Mets get a pair. Another new guy, Joe Orsolak, hammers that one to right, scores Bobby Bow. It's 5-3, but then the Yankees muscle up some more. Dave Silvestri homered, and so does Gerald Williams. The kid looked good. Three hits for Williams and a free souvenir for that little guy. 9-3, the Yankees win it. And as long as he's got his, time to uh, vacate the premises. We've got twilight hockey in Jersey and out in the nation's capital as the Devils and Islanders involved in that playoff push in the Patrick Division, first to Meadowlands, where Philly super rookie Eric Lindros gets a face full of stick from the Devils' Alexander Cimac. No penalty was called. Less than a minute left in the period. Flyers get the shorthanded goal. Gary Galley. Right now, the Flyers lead the Devils. It's one to nothing. That's in the second period. Now, the Islanders, they're in Washington. First period, visitors on the board first. Nice passing here. Watch. Turgeon to Malikoff for Derek King. Isles are leading the Caps one to nothing. They are entering the second period of that one. College hoop tourney time and Rutgers stay in the Atlantic 10 festivities is a short one. Quarterfinal Sunday that had Temple alum Bill Cosby taken in the early game before his guys play tonight. Rutgers out to a good start. Steve Worthy dials up long distance. Scarlet Knights were on top by eight at the half, but St. Joe's comes storming back. Brian Blunt will take it from end to end. St. John's. St. Joe's, that is, eliminates Rutgers in the Atlantic 10, 71 to 70. Also in that tournament, George Washington beat Rhode Island, 86 to 75. Well, top-ranked North Carolina remembers the last time they played sixth-ranked Duke. That was the last time the Tar Heels lost, nine games ago. And were they ever ready for Duke in the Dean Dome this time? It was all Carolina. Donald Williams was wonderful. He hit five three-pointers on his way to a career-high 27. Bobby Hurley didn't get much respect from Carolina. Eric Montrose swats it away. Tar Heels just poured it on. Brian Reese. CD Interactive, the imagination machine.